Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. The uh, paid request this time for Bod Zombie. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, reviews, re reviews, topics, randomness, out of blueness, commentaries, reactions, whatever it may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box under each of these videos. And one of the ones he wanted me to talk about was The Devil and Daniel Johnston, which I did not know what this is, but it is a documentary about Daniel Johnston. If you're wondering who that is, well, I did. You're not alone because I didn't know who it was. But this is a guy who was in the Austin, Texas market, especially around 85, 86. And throughout the years, he battled with a lot of mental illness and his songs, there was definitely a following for his songwriting, songs in general, songs performed by people like Tom Waits, Pearl Jam, Beck. He had fans like Sonic Youth. Uh, Matt Groening, the creator of The Simpsons, appears near the end of this doc. Uh, Kurt Cobain was a fan because during the MTV uh, 1992 awards, he wore a t-shirt which was the cover of Daniel Johnston's kind of his first album, I guess the best way to put it, Hi, How Are Ya? And many magazines and many pieces of promotion, Kurt Cobain would have that same type of t-shirt. And so people go, well, what is that t-shirt? He was on T MTV for a little bit, and... This was also an individual that had a lot of, like I said, mental issues, whether it be bipolar, whether it be believing in demons and the devil, where... And there are some interesting, like, crazy stories. And I would say that was the more interesting parts of the film. For example, there's a bit where he's walking, and he just walks to this random building, and walks into this random woman this old lady he was like oh keep quiet out there because he was making a lot of noise and then she was so scared she had to jump out the window and so when the guy got arrested for burglary and put into a home i should say a mental hospital he would say well the demons jumped through the door and she jumped through the window or there's a bit later on where he does, they get him out of the hospital, and he's like, I can't take my meds, because that's when I'll be better as a musician. And he does well enough, they get a standing ovation, he comes out, his dad uh, flies his airplane, he's on it, and Daniel just, because he wasn't on his meds, believed that he was Casper, the friendly ghost. As we're reading a comic, that Casper, you know, he didn't need a parachute. So, hey, we don't need parachutes, and he, because he was younger and bigger than his dad, he took the keys out and threw it out the window and took control of the plane and going all around, the dad finally got the control and slammed the airplane, crash. But, you know, the, the dad was able to land it enough so that they didn't die. There's one kind of funny bit where when he's in the hospital he wants to be a spokesperson for Mountain Dew and he tries to make a little jingle for Mountain Dew and I will say the documentary I think is well produced the documentary is well edited well filmed because it's the way it's editing either home movies family photos uh, the guy would have a lot of audio cassettes so a lot of times it would have the camera on the audio cassette and there's a little bit of tape on to give a little bit of detail and you're hearing from the man himself his past thoughts because he recorded a lot of these audio tapes or when telling that story of the Mountain Dew the camera pans all the way down the hallway to this Pepsi machine and then going all the way down to the thing that says Mountain Dew uh, like there's some nice pieces of direction in terms of the the documentary And also some some kind of weird choices. Like I guess 
They talked to the lead singer of this band called the Butthole Surfers, which I remember hearing about that band back in the day. I know I've heard a couple of their songs. And I guess the only time they could talk to him is when he was at the dentist, because he's like, someone's drilling in his teeth, and he's telling the story about Daniel, and then the drilling is more of his teeth. I guess, again, that was the only way they could talk to him, or the only time he had. And I'll go more in-depth into it, and more into spoilers for those who want to see it, and I don't just tell the whole thing. But before I get into that, I'm kind of split on this documentary. It's well made, like I said. It's just, I got really annoyed and really irritated by the subject matter. It's like it's a nicely made documentary, but the subject, while it does have some interesting stories, I really did not like this Daniel Johnston guy. I'm sorry that he has these mental issues, but the way he acts, the way he speaks, the way he acts with other people, the consistent amount of times he gets another shot and another shot, and... I also don't understand the love for his music. Now I know, you could say, well what do you know? Hell, Tom Waits and Pearl Jam and Beck and Kurt Cobain and Metro, they all liked it, so what the hell do I know? But again, I'm listening, maybe if they're performed by other performers that know how to sing, that's a different matter as a songwriting aspect. But, I mean, there's one line. In my head, there's a negative Superman. Okay. Yeah, we call that bizarro. <laughs> but, a lot of times, it's him singing. And whether playing the guitar... Like, at one point, he won the Folk Artist Award in Austin in 1986. I, I do like that one guy says, Yeah, a lot of people were mad about that. He's like, eh, I don't know... Because I don't think he's much of a singer. I really don't. He kind of talks like a kid. His singing, I don't think, is all that. His artistry, he's way better than me. Because I could barely do stit figures. But his artistry, some of it's okay. And then some of it's like, okay, I've seen better on a random person on, uh, what's that site? Deviant Art, I believe it's called. Is I was looking up pictures of like someone was doing like Rambo and Cobra and where's this website? Oh, it's called DeviantArt. There are people on there that do an exceptional better than this, and they don't get anything from it. They don't get at the time of day. But this guy, I mean, like he drew a Captain America. I'm sitting there going, kind of shitty looking Captain America. It just some of his art is okay. They're all better than what I could do, but I don't think his art is as great as people made out to be. I didn't think his singing was as great as people made it out to be. I guess I just don't get the get it. Like I said, songwriting aspect wise, and maybe in the with the ears of listening to a better band, better singer, vocally <laughs> suggest those lyrics into a palpable sustenance that I could easily swallow more than this. But I'm still there going, man, like, all this hype about this guy and his songs, his singing, I really don't get it. Like, what's all this trouble for? So I guess that's the thing where I just didn't get that aspect. So it was more of the, the mental history that was more interesting than the music aspect in this case. And it shows him growing up and filming with Super 8 and his mom calling him an unprofitable servant. He doesn't really know what to do. He's writing songs with his girl but she married an undertaker. He liked to play the piano. And once again, nice uh, direction like there's this bit where 
he has this vocal audio tape of oh I've lost my mind so the camera is on this pretty much this pad like a pad of paper that type of thing and the camera's kind of circling down and this stuff's being animated about a guy who lost his mind blood seeping out and That wasn't too bad. That seemed like something I would see on liquid television uh, a little bit. But again, though, I'm trying to watch and this. I'm going. <sighs> Maybe it's one of those that if this was a 30 minute, 30 minute special with just the highlights, I would have liked it more or been fine with it more. But I will say as it kept going, I was kind of waiting for it to end. And yeah, I would say it is semi-interesting, but I can't say I'm a big fan of it. Like the the documentary I reviewed recently, Hail Satan, that was more interesting of a documentary. There's been others. This one, I, don't know, I guess, maybe how you feel about Daniel Johnson's music and his ability, that will help swerve you in one direction or another. But yeah, I can't help it. There got to a point that I was really annoyed by this individual, his voice, his audio tapes. And I'm like, in that cynical, unsympathetic nature of just putting him in a straitjacket, put him in the home and keep him there. Put him in the mental facility and keep him there. Which I know that's very unfair. I know it's mean to say. But I mean, what can I say? But getting more into spoilers... Like says, him growing up, not be able to fit in in different schools. At one point, he goes and he lives with his brother a little bit. That doesn't work out. Then he lives with his sister a little bit. That doesn't work out. Then he joins a carnival. At one point, apparently, he got punched. He wandered and he asked for help at a church. One thing led to another, he found this. Uh, he was in Austin in 1985. And he's in this band, or at least knew this band. And I'm just sitting there going, I don't get it. I thought the music sucks and the singing sucks. And with this album called Hi, How Are You? Now, I, maybe I need to listen to lyrics more clearly. But when you have a singer and a voice that just... And when he's just strumming the music. I mean, I can't play music either. But I know that. But with all the great guitarists, they're probably out there getting change, Sally, even though they deserve a lot more, and they don't have a documentary made about them. I guess if they're more crazy, then they would. If they were more insane, then they would. And maybe that's where I'm coming out, where there's a lot of other people that are more musically inclined, but they did nothing. But apparently, like, he won the Austin Award for Best Songwriter and Best Folk Artist, and some people were mad about that. Before that, he was on MTV, this show called The Cutting Edge. Uh, <laughs> at one point, they got into more weed and acid, and that really just destroyed a lot of his mind. And that's where you get a, a piece of story from the lead singer of the, the Butthole Surfers. This guy hit a lot of acid. This manager he had, he hit the guy like three times. So obviously that was a big uh, change. Then at one point he was with a part of his family and he kept doing weird stuff like hanging the, a Beatles album or a number nine on the tree. And they're like, well, what are you doing? And he gets in a fight with one of his family members and they, you're gone. He goes back home to his parents. He's depression. Meditation, he's drawed, he's in, in a bed for an entire year. As you can tell, I'm doing more into spoilers. Spoilers, spoilers. And that's where it's like, just more of this depression stuff. And I won't play, I'm going to a Weston, the Weston Mental Hospital in West, uh, West Virginia. That's where you get the stories with the Mountain Dew and the, the concert and the plane crash. And that Kurt Cobain apparently was a fan of his. 
this one guy who's a manager that I don't know how he why he tried to stick with this guy, but this one guy who when he was in the Weston Mental Hospital, he came in. He was a publicist, and he knew that the manager they hit with the three fucking tons of a pipe probably didn't want anything to do with him anymore. So he's like, "Oh yeah, I'm sure I'm his manager, his new manager." I tried to get him Daniel with this company, but Daniel was paranoid and delusions that oh well, Metallica was part of it. The the company as well was also signed with them, and oh no. Uh, they sell it with Satan and they'll beat me up or they'll kill me. I didn't delusions. So that deal went bye bye. And then one thing led to another, and Daniel pretty much treated him like shit and fired him. And then down with a new manager, went with Atlantic, had an album, and only sold like 5,000 copies. So bye bye to that. And then it had like a big jump in in years because that was like 93 was it or was it 96 it was 93 or 96 and then it seemed like it just jumped to kind of more modern time and he's r really out of it because something I noticed they they could not get an actual sit down talk to talk interview with Daniel in modern time like sit down let's talk about not really like the only time you really get a lot of big thoughts on Daniel from his mouth is from these older audio tapes so it be, seems to be that he can't really have I guess a conversation with the it's more like conversation with his mom and dad and other people he knew, but not really from him. I didn't. What we did is from these uh, audio cassette tapes. I guess with the meditation and other stuff, he just. I guess he can't do that. Because apparently the, the parents will, will take him like, to the mall or other stuff, but. And like the camera's there, and there's Daniel, so he's fine with having them around. But I guess again, because of all that, he can't have a you know, face you know, sit down conversation. Um, but that would have been nice to maybe see to get more of a. It's one thing to other people to say; it's one thing for the person himself to say it, if that makes sense. And the, the it. The doubt me, I don't know if he didn't know how to end it. Because it's like, okay, well, there's this and this. And, oh, now his artwork, some of it's being sold. And it just felt like a depressing ending. But it made it seem as if it was a... I read a couple of reviews that seemed to think, oh, yeah, this worked out. And it showed that meditation helps. I'm like, I didn't really get that. It just felt more depressing and... Just the parents going, well, when we're gone, we don't know what will happen with Daniel, and he'll, he'll be fine on his own. Which, I mean, I don't know what this Daniel guy's doing nowadays. How's that working out? But yeah, as I'm sitting here and I'm watching, I'm going, I don't know, I just felt kind of depressed. A couple, you know, crazy stories. And as a fellow, there's a guy that because of his mental illnesses, he never, never had his shit together. But people disagreed because he had it long enough to do this music stuff that I guess all these. But that's the thing it says Tom Waits and Pro. Jam, but it's not like you hear from. Like that would have been nice too. Like, okay, talk to someone from Nirvana who knew Kurt Cobain. Did Kurt Cobain ever mention this guy? Actually, talk to Tom Waits, talk to Pearl Jam, talk to Beck. If you perform the guy's songs, or even Matt Groening, like you hear him talking to Daniel, but have Matt Groening actually talk more. We hear a little bit of, oh yeah, this guy gave me this music and I listened to it, but it's him talking to Daniel. It's like, okay, well, what is it about this guy that you like, blah, blah, blah. 
But I guess it was more about just the his friends and, and people around him. But again, as a senior songwriter, I just don't see why all these folks gravitate towards this guy. I just don't see it. There's like a beacon that people drew to him and I did that all that one where he got a standing ovation. I'm sitting there and going, why? He kind of just strummed the guitar and he's saying, and it's not really that great of a voice. And my voice isn't great, but I, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. Like I said, the I like the way bits of the documentary was edited together. Like I said before, with all the family photos and whole movies and everything in between put together. The way certain shots were done. <clears throat> I have to think that because of this craziness, this must have been a pain in the ass to edit as a doc. Does he have a subject matter that, again, you can't really have a sit-down talk, it seems. And it's Daniel Johnston, but you can't really have a modern sit-down, mano-a-mano conversation, it seems. At least not as much as you think. And, uh, <coughs> it was worth a watch. I would never watch it again. So, uh, different strokes for different folks. If you just watch the trailer, and if it intrigues you, go for it. But, uh, uh thanks once again, Bob Zombie. Take care, and uh, we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.